Hi everyone, so this is Dr. Nali. I'm going to be talking about in this uh, second series of video on molarity and dilution of aqueous solutions. So, of course, we discussed in the previous uh, videos on the properties of aqueous solution that one of the things that define an aqueous solution is the presence of a solute uh, particle uh, mixing with the solvent. And as it turns out, depending on whether you have a lot of solute versus a little bit of solute, the properties of the aqueous solutions will also be different. And so they have different physical and chemical properties depending on the number of solute particles that are dissolved in a given volume of solvent. So from a qualitative perspective, we can uh, use two words to describe this uh, two different solutions. One is what we call a concentrated solution and what that just means is that you have relatively a larger number of solute particles in your solution and then the word dilute or dilute solutions is used to refer to solutions that have a smaller number of solute particles. Now we also of course need a more quantitative measure of uh, number of particles in aqueous solution and the measurement that we use or the property that we use to quantify um, number of solid particles in a solution is called molarity or molar concentration or just concentration um, of the solution. So the idea is the following. You can have, um, you can see in this picture here that this is a fairly dilute solution so it the color of this solution is a lot less intense in comparison to this solution. This is what we refer to as a concentrated solution. And if you want to use molarity to describe these two solutions, then you would say that this is the high molarity solution and this is the low molarity solution. From an atomic scale picture, you can see that there's a lot more solid particles. The solid particles are colored blue in this case. So the more you have of them, the bluer the color of the solution will be. And then in this case, you have fewer solid particles, so it's not as blue as this concentrated solution right here. So let's talk about the definition of molarity. So molarity is just, um, it's a measure, remember, of how many solids you have in the solution. So it's just defined fairly simply as the number of moles of solute divided by the volume of solution. Now, one thing I want to point out here is that uh, probably in a prior chemistry course, like an intro chemistry course, you're used to being told that uh, a, a one molarity is equal to one mole of solute over one liter of solution, and that's correct, okay? However, I noticed that there's generally a tendency for students to try to convert back always to the mole and liter definition. But if you think about this definition of one molar being equal to one mole of solute over one liter of solution, if I were to just add a prefix, the same prefix to both top and bottom of this mole and liter, I will get one millimole of solute over one milliliter of solution. And that's equally uh, the same as this one in terms of concentration. They're both one molar solution except that with this one you have a much smaller volume okay now I can do the same thing if I change it to another prefix micro in this case so if I have one micromole of solute over one microliter of solution that solution is still one molar in concentration so you want to be able to interconvert between the different moles and volume expression whether it's a larger value like this one or a smaller value like this one. Um, so just be comfortable in, in, in changing back and forth uh, with the different definitions because all of these refer to one molar of solution. Okay, there's a couple of terminologies I want you to know as far as molarity is concerned. Uh, a solution that has the maximum number of solutes that could, it could have, in other words, it has the highest concentration it could have, and the, if you keep adding the solute, the solute will no longer dissolve. Uh, that's what we refer to as a saturated solution. So that just means that a solution that's maxed out in terms of the amount of solute that it could accommodate. Um, the other thing I want to mention is uh, it's often convenient, convenient if you want to express lower concentration to use prefixes. For example, 
instead of writing 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, you can say that the concentration is 1.5 millimolar because milli is uh, 10 to the minus 3. So now let's talk a little bit about how to prepare a solution if you're starting from a solid. Okay, so if you have a solid uh, that serves as your solid in this case, so you have your solid, what you do is you usually need some kind of a, a volumetric flask, in other words a flask that only has one line, and that line shows a particular volume. So for example, a liter maybe in this case, and you weigh a certain amount of solute that you're going to make, and you know that if you add the volume up to a liter, then that's going to be a certain concentration. So what you do then is you put the solid in the volumetric flask, and you just keep adding water until you reach that one liter mark. Okay, that's how you would make a, a reagent stock, for example, that um, you use for your experiment. So another concept related to concentration or molarity is this idea of a dilution. A dilution is basically a technique that's used in the lab to take a solution that's concentrated or higher molarity to a solution that is less concentrated or lower molarity and that process itself is called dilution. To dilute a particular stock solution um, or a concentrated solution you basically add water to the concentrated solution. So there are several terms that you need to know here uh, as far as dilution is concerned. The more concentrated solution is what uh, we refer to as the stock solution. I used this word a few times already in this video. The less concentrated solution are what we call our diluted or sometimes also called the working solution. You can see here uh, perhaps that this uh, solution that's very red is your stock solution and perhaps you need three different concentrations to work with uh, because you're making three different types of measurements and so you would take this stock solution and you would dilute it by adding water mixing water with some volume of this uh, stock solution okay and as you as a result you get three different concentrations and that you can see very clearly is differentiated by the color so this one is the most dilute this is medium and this is the least dilute out of the three okay so how do you do dilution fairly simple you're going to go back and use that volumetric flask again but instead of putting a solid in here you're going to start with the a uh, little bit of water then you're going to add your stock solution okay which you can see here is in the pipette and you put that in and it has this color but of course what you want to do is dilute it all the way to the uh, volume mark itself so then you bring it up to this mark which in this case happens to be 500 milliliter and basically what you've done is you've diluted that stock solution that was originally pipette uh, up to a total volume of 500 milliliter in the second uh, in the diluted solution. Okay, so notice that when we're diluting the only thing we're adding is water or solvent uh, to a solution that already exists before at a certain concentration. Because we're only adding solvent the number of moles of solute is the same before and after dilution and that allows us to derive a dilution formula which I'll do uh, on the next slide. Okay so notice what I said earlier in the previous slide is the number of moles of solute before dilution is equal to the number of moles of solute after dilution, right? Because the only thing we're changing is actually the number of moles of solvent but not solute. So as a result the solute doesn't change. Now if you remember from the definition of molarity before, molarity is equal to the number of moles of solute over volume of solution. So I can rearrange this equation to solve for the number of moles of solute and that's just going to be the molarity of the solution times the volume of solution. So in other words it's m times v. So then each one of this is m times v so I can write m1 v1 m2 
V2, where 1 is before dilution and M2 is after dilution. So that's your dilution uh, formula. Basically, this referred to before dilution and this part here referred to after dilution. Okay, so it's the concentration before dilution or concentration of the stock, volume of the stock, concentration of the working solution, and volume of the working solution. Okay, so the last part here is just to go through a couple of examples, calculations to show how we can put this idea of molarity and dilution into practice. Here you start with a sodium hydroxide um, solution, which is a fairly soluble uh, solute, actually, sodium hydroxide. So you can make a saturated solution of sodium hydroxide, and it will have 572 grams of the solid per liter of solution. The first question is just to calculate the molarity of this solution. And then the second one is we're doing some dilution, and we're being asked to calculate what's concentration at the end. Okay, so first we need to start with our sodium hydroxide, which of course has that formula. We're being asked the molarity of sodium hydroxide, which is of course number of moles of sodium hydroxide over volume of solution. And we actually have both of these quantities already. The number of moles we need to calculate, but we were told that we started with uh, 572 grams of the solid okay we take that number and we divide it by the molar mass of sodium hydroxide uh, which is just 23 for the sodium and then 16 for the oxygen one for this so that's 23 plus 17 that's 40 grams per mole that gives you the number of moles of um, sodium hydroxide and then the volume is just given as one liter so pretty much that's the end of it that will tell you the molarity of the saturated solution and that solution would have a molar, uh, molarity or a concentration of 14.3 molar. By the way, uh, a lot of times instead of writing M of sodium hydroxide, people would use this symbol with the brackets in them to indicate concentration of sodium hydroxide in molar terms. So that symbol bracket is, uh, basically means the same thing as molarity. So the second question is on dilution. And the idea there is the following. You start with uh, a, some amount of the saturated sodium hydroxide. It tells you that it's 25 milliliter. And to this, you add water, and specifically 75 milliliters of water. So then the question is, what is the concentration after you add that water? OK, so you add the water, uh, say, the I'm just going to add a little bit uh, different color here for the water. So let's say you add the water and what you get is, you know, this is your new volume here. So the question is, what is the concentration of the solution once you have the water and the uh, saturated solution mixed together? Now this is a dilution question because you have a stock solution, you add water to it, so you're diluting it. So you just use that M1V1 equals M2V2. And the only thing you need to remember, of course, is M1V1 is the stock, so you're starting with 14.3 molar uh, times volume 1, which is 25 milliliter. And that has to equal to molarity 2, that's what we're trying to figure out, and volume 2. Now, volume 2 is volume of solution, which is the total volume. So in this case, we have 75 plus 25 milliliters, okay? I can cancel the milliliters out because they're uh, equal on both sides of the equation and then solve for M2, which is just going to be 14.3 times 25 divided by 100. And my answer would be, should be 3.58 molar. Okay, so that hopefully clears up the example on uh, how to do dilution and molarity calculation. You'll get to practice some more in class when we go through the problem sets and clicker questions.